the brain rot that nationalism has contributed to in Americans leaves people thinking and worshipping and supporting troops who committed war crimes in Iraq, Syria, Libya, Afghanistan, Somalia, Mozambique. These nationalistic holidays, they omit completely the human cost. They don't mention all the bullets and drone strikes and carpet bombing nations destroying their infrastructure. When you support the troops, you end up with war crimes. The point of, you know, Veterans Day Memorial Day is to raise this blind allegiance, um, to conjure up feelings of pride at the cost of, you know, the civilians in Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, and Palestine who were murdered. Um, but you know, it's important for you to support the troops. Don't pay attention to the war crimes. Anyone who stands for the flag is brainwashed and uh, is highly susceptible to state propaganda because they don't do, they have zero critical thinking skills, they won't question anything that comes out of a state official's mouth, and they just believe them at, you know, face value. If you ask an, Amer an American what the meaning of 9-11 was before the attacks on the towers, they couldn't fucking tell you. That's how fucking stupid they are. Because the American education system makes no mention of the coup in Chile that outed Allende, murdered him, and installed a right-wing dictator. It goes back again to how nationalism and propaganda is shown to children when they're small because it's very easy to support the United States when you're fed these fairy tales about you know, our history. And we have a sanitized version of our history taught to us that says, you know, we help people, we support the underdog, we fight the bad guys, we take out terrorists. Because when you purposely hide the worst parts of American history, you skew their view of the world and their view of right and wrong. They feel pride in the American flag in spite of it being drenched in the blood of innocent civilians. Captain America, G.I. Joe, more state propaganda that is directed specifically at children so they grow up thinking that America's the good guy. We're the saviors. We help people. So this double standard that children are too young, they're, they're too young to learn about slavery, but they're old enough to glorify war. You'll see them thanking the troops, but if you mention what those troops do, the Fallujah massacre, the prisons that were run in Iraq, the torture camps, the black sites where innocent people are taken on, you know, suspicions of terrorism. They're too young to they're too young to question the state, but they're old enough to celebrate Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and Fourth of July. So the brainwashing of children in America begins when we have holidays. So, you know, children look forward to having time off from school and not only that, but you get to go to a parade where they have music and food and balloons and you get your face painted and you get to play fair games, which are all surrounding the state. And it centers, um, you know, American pride before the rights of people in Guatemala, Ecuador, Venezuela, Bolivia. Parades, songs, anthems, and holidays serve, serve as anesthesia to the American people so they ignore the history of coups and buy into overzealous, ego-driven propaganda. D-Day. It's never mentioned that some of the soldiers who are still trapped in the Arizona wholeheartedly believed in segregation and supported Jim Crow. So let's not pretend these were moral individuals. They used a hard R. Plenty of white soldiers came home from fighting fascism in Germany to pick up a sign and protest against the civil rights movement. Veterans and Memorial Day. Nope, still can't discuss the coups and genocide that US troops committed. The 4th of July is one of the most powerful um, methods of 
propaganda in the United States. It tells us uh, from early childhood, whenever you go to those parades or marches or picnics, that America gained its independence and there was freedom for all. Yeah, except for, you know, the few hundred thousand slaves that whites owned. That's never mentioned when people want to celebrate the 4th of July. They just conveniently ignore that little fact that, you know, slaveholders wrote the Constitution, the Bill of Rights was written by human traffickers, and most of the country wasn't actually free because pe black people weren't viewed as equal. But you know, American pride is more important. They have to have their fragile little egos coddled. So um, white Americans get very defensive and they get very um, agitated when you mention that, you know, 4th of July is a lie, and the 4th of July is uh, propaganda to make people proud of a country that owned human slaves. How Americans can claim to be moral people when they have slaveholders in their pockets, literally, and, you know, will quote the Founding Fathers to no end. The Founding Fathers are described as if they were liberators or revolutionaries. Um, you know, they were very concerned about their private property and, you know, not paying taxes. They didn't do anything they did during the Revolutionary War because they wanted to hold on. They wanted to, you know, free people. Uh, they didn't view indigenous people or black people as humans, so, you know, in their mind they justified uh, maintaining slavery for over another century. The 4th of July is a slave owner's holiday. It is romanticizing people who operated work camps. It brushes violations of human rights under the rug for the sake of national pride. I wouldn't mind if there are holidays where these, these contradictions were discussed but they never are. They're completely ignored. These are brushed under the rug uh, crimes against humanity, essentially. And we have invaded countries for less. Do you think children are going to question the 4th of July and the fact that we're celebrating slave owners when they get to get off of school and go to a barbecue? Veterans Day and Memorial Day are to commemorate the U.S. military and to, you know, blindly worship them despite the coups and the genocide, um, you know, don't mention war crimes, that's disrespectful. You know, it's strange that you mention things that actually happen that are a part of history that, you know, were recorded events, but if you try to mention war crimes committed under the guise of supporting the troops or people with land of the free home of the brave bumper stickers will never mention how segregated the u.s military was they'll never mention the war crimes that were committed uh the my Lai massacre the uh dropping of agent orange on uh civilians in cambodia laos and vietnam there are children being born today there are generations, actually, in Southeast Asia who were born with birth defects, all because um, ego-driven, overzealous, prideful Americans wanted to support the troops. When you support the troops, you end up with war crimes. So, even on Veterans and Memorial Day, um, which are highly nationalistic, nope, still can't discuss the coups and genocide that were committed in Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Libya, Syria, Somalia, Afghanistan, or Palestine. Here's a flag, kid. Go wave it at a parade. And better yet, if you or your peers abuse, killed, raped, or drone-striked communities in their own country, you get 20% off at Old Navy. The point of, you know, Veterans Day Memorial Day is to raise this blind allegiance, um, to conjure up feelings of pride, at the cost of, you know, the civilians in Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, and Palestine who were murdered. Um, 
but you know it's important for you to support the troops don't pay attention to the war crimes here's a flag kid go wave it at a parade and better yet if you or your peers abused, raped, murdered, or drone striked civilians in Afghanistan, Libya, Somalia, um, Kuwait, Libya, Afghanistan, or Iraq, you get 20% off at Old Navy. The Houston riots, uh, the Houston Police Department actually tried to tweet out a, an obituary for one of the crackers who was responsible for the Houston riots, which was a base that was segregated and basically the black soldiers decided they had enough and they weren't going to take any more shit from the white soldiers or their white superiors. So they armed themselves and began to um, enact justice on their own. Support the troops is code for don't question military intervention. Um, it glorifies violence, it, it ignores regime change, and doesn't acknowledge the sexual assault in the military. The ICC would beg to differ. Actually, um, America has committed so many war crimes, the Hague Invasion Act says that no U.S. citizen, official, soldier, or politician or elected official can be held accountable by the ICC. A hit dog will holler. If the United States had nothing to hide, they wouldn't be worried about the ICC coming after us for war crimes. But no, they had to pass this act that basically says, it, you know, wipes our hands of any responsibility for murdering or raping civilians in Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Syria, Palestine, Kuwait, um, you know, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, um, basically anywhere in the world that we have a base. If they, you know, 9-11, the fallout from 9-11, the war on terror, and the uh, invasion of Iraq ruined hundreds and thousands of lives. Uh, 2000 American deaths are viewed as more important than over 500,000 Iraqi lives. The, those are not soldiers, those are not um, militants, they were civilians. And the invasion of Iraq created more human suffering and caused more uh, crimes against humanity than anything Saddam Hussein did. And it's so annoying that the fucking Republicans and conservatives will, you know, uh, construct and fabricate a narrative that American soldiers were fucking helping people abroad when after the uh, withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan, you had parents selling their organs on the black market because the, their economy collapsed and Joe Biden stole seven billion dollars from their central bank. How could America be a defender of human rights and a supporter of democracy when it stole seven billion dollars from Afghan's central bank? You have to be delusional and out of your fucking mind to think that America is helping civilians abroad when we leave, um, you know, demolished cities and Kabul in ruins. American nationalism has infected their mind and nationalism has rotted their brain to the point where if you mention um, what Syria and Libya and Afghanistan and Somalia and Palestine and uh, Kuwait and Mozambique look like after U.S. bases and U.S. troops and U.S. military in intervention and, you know, dis defending our uh, interests. The aftermath of that, you're called um, a, a, a radical.